Alright, hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to do my cat picks, my TBR, take number two. So, I did it before, uh, with pretty good results. I think I had uh, three four stars and one 3.5 stars out of that. So I'm pretty happy with that, and we're going to do it again. So I've got a selection of books that I'm going to get my uh, cat, Biggie, to choose from. And so we're going to go handheld in a minute, and you're going to get the joy of uh, me talking to my cat again. So yeah, I'm going to shoot that as and when the cat becomes available, and uh, then hopefully at the end I'll do like a recap of what, what books you chose as well. And then we'll do a wrap-up once I've read them. Cool. Hey buddy, are you going to help me pick some books again? Do you remember how this works? Look, let me just get the books. We're just going to take them from my shelf. Now, we're going to need some treats for this. I know. What have we got in here? Okay, so the people at home, and possibly the cat, I don't know how his brain works, may recognise these three. So this is going to be the tomb edition, by the way, or tome, however you would like to pronounce it. How are you doing, bud? Three, which one are you going to go for? Which one are you going to go for? Look over here. Oh, is he going for Joe Hill? He's gone for Joe Hill, so Nosferatu for book number one. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but the other two were Everything's Eventual by Stephen King and Inferno by Dan Brown. Okay, well that's an interesting set of three I've just grabbed there. We've got Insomnia by Stephen King, Nightmares and Dreamscapes by Stephen King, and Strange Weather by Joe Hill. <laughs> What's over here? Okay. So which one are you going to go for, Biggie? You're very difficult to get in shot, you know. Come on, which one are you going to go for? Oh, that one was easy. Joe Hill. Excuse me, then. Excuse me, mister. So we've picked Strange Weather by Joe Hill. Here we go. So we have If You Like School, You'll Love Work by Irvin Welsh. Dead Simple by Peter James. And Porno by Irvin Welsh. So we'll see. If he, uh, if he does a Joe Hill again and goes for the one by the... Oi! Biggie! Biggie boy. Come on. Come on then. Which one are you going for? You've done it. You did a Joe Hill, you went for Peter James, dead simple. And I was hoping you would pick that as well. So thank you, Kat. And here you go, you can have these two bonus ones. Good boy. Say goodbye to the internet then. Goodbye, internet. We'll see you later. Okay, so he's getting good at this and starting to grasp the idea, I think. So he picked three books. He picked Nosferatu by Joe Hill. Strange Weather by Joe Hill. Which actually, I didn't realise that we've got two Joe Hills there, but what the hey, I like Joe Hill. And Dead Simple by Peter James. So these are my three relatively thick picks. I mean, all of them, I was trying to get through some of the thicker books on my shelves. So I'll be reading these in the coming days and weeks and, uh, you know, stay tuned in for a little mini wrap up of what I thought. Okay, so I am back. I have read the three books that Biggie picked for me and I'm going to go through them in order. So we'll start with Nosferatu by Joe Hill. So this is basically uh, the story of a guy called uh, Charles or Charlie Manx who basically kidnaps kids and takes them to a place called Christmas Land. He has a, a number plate, uh, which is a vanity plate, NOS4R2, or in America it's NOS4A2, because they pronounce Nosferatu differently. And as you can guess from his name, he's kind of a vampire. He sort of feeds on the negative energy, so he deliberately seeks out children who've been abused or who've had rough childhoods so that he can feed on their bad energy. And he basically turns them out into hollowed out husks, and he keeps them again in this place called Christmas Land. And it's got... It's really interesting how like things like Christmas songs and decorations and all of this stuff are, are used to become quite sinister throughout this. We also have the fact that this, for me, reads so much like Stephen King, which is Joe Hill's dad, that if you'd have handed this to me and I had no context, I would have just thought it was Stephen King. And I've read other Joe Hill stuff, and I do think he has his own authorial voice, but I think he's probably at his closest to being his father in this. Maybe just because it's quite long. Uh, so basically the plot in this is that there's a young girl called Victoria McQueen and she's kind of kidnapped by Charlie Manx and uh, she manages to foil the escape. She actually marries the guy that uh, helped her to escape who kind of let her jump on the back of a motorbike 
And that takes maybe the first 150 or so pages, but I don't feel like it's a spoiler because it's all covered in the blurb. Uh, then basically she grows up, her own daughter goes missing, and then she has to track down Charlie Manx and find Christmas Land to try and uh, to try and save her. Now what I thought was great about this is all of the characters felt super realistic. I think there was one point towards the end, there's a bit of romance towards the end between two of the characters, which I felt like it was a bit forced, uh, and it just was convenient because they were like, the male and female that was still alive or whatever, you know? So I wasn't, I, I didn't, I wasn't really feeling that and I felt like that was out of character, particularly for the for the woman there. But um, other than that, most of them were quite consistent, I thought. There's also a librarian in this who was just super badass. Um, she basically, she could kind of communicate with this other world and get messages through Scrabble tiles, uh, but she did it best when she was in pain. So because of that, she kind of became a bit of a junkie and would burn her arms with cigarettes and stuff. So there's some dark stuff, quite a few sort of gory bits and sort of violent bits, but uh, I don't know, I didn't find it particularly terrifying or anything like that, but I did really enjoy it. So there is that. I gave this a pretty solid four out of five. It's not quite a five for me. But um, yeah, I did enjoy it, and I'm glad I read it. It's not quite as good as Heart Shaped Box, but um, I think so far, all the Joe Hill I've read is uh, definitely worth reading. I'm just going to point out the cat down here as well. Look at him. <laughs> he's uh, He's been meowing a lot, so I sprayed the, the carpet with uh, catnip, and now he's flopped. Okay, number two, we have Dead Simple by Peter James. So, um, I should read the blurbs, actually. Go on, I'm going to go back and read you the blurb of Nosferatu. The New York Times best-selling author of Heart Shaped Box and Horns returns with a novel that will have readers flinching at shadows and checking the rearview mirror, just in case. Young Victoria McQueen has a gift for finding things. All she has to do is ride her bike through the shorter way bridge and she'll come out wherever she needs to be. It's an ability she keeps secret because no one would understand it, until she discovers she's not the only one with a special gift. Charlie Manx takes children for rides in his 1938 Rolls-Royce Wraith with its Nosferatu vanity plate, driving them away from their families, their homes, even their own humanity. When they reach their destination, they've changed utterly. They've become Charlie's children, as unstoppable and insane as Manx himself. Only one kid ever escaped Charlie Manx, Vic McQueen. But the end of that nightmare was just the beginning of their life and death battle of wills, a battle that explodes a quarter century later, because now Manx has taken Vic's son, and Vic McQueen is gonna get him back or die trying. Do you mind, cat? Okay, so, Dead Simple. Uh, this is Roy Grace book number one, and so this is like the start of a long series of crime novels by Peter James. I'll read you the blurb. It was meant to be a harmless stag night prank. A few hours later, four of his best mates are dead, and Michael Harrison has disappeared. With only three days to the wedding, Detective Superintendent Grace, a man haunted by the shadow of his own missing wife, is contacted by Michael's beautiful, distraught fiance, Ashley Harper. Grace discovers that the one man who ought to know Michael Harrison's whereabouts is saying nothing. But then he has a lot to gain, more than anyone realises. For one man's disaster is another man's fortune. Dead Simple. The stunning first novel in a gripping new mystery series, Dead Simple marks the triumphant return of one of Britain's most ingenious crime writers. So yeah, he has kind of had books out from before this, and uh, he's also worked for film and television and stuff like that. Fun fact, his mother also used to make gloves for the Queen, which I learned recently. So there you go. Uh, so this is all set in Brighton, so if you've ever visited Brighton or if you know the area, I think you're going to enjoy it a lot more as well. Uh, uh, Peter James is also known for putting in a lot of research and uh, talking to a lot of, you know, policemen and specialists in the subject areas to kind of get all the information. It's quite interesting because this first one was obviously, it was published I think 2005, so this was before the smoking ban uh, you have a character he's you know doing a phone and uh, he's trying to memorize the sequence of numbers to press on the numbered button pads because you know it was before touch screens and full c c uh, keyboards on phones and stuff but it's really interesting because throughout the series he's kind of kept himself up to date with the technology as well again because this is the first one it actually introduces a bunch of characters who are sticking around for many more books to come i mean i've read these out of order just picking them up in charity shops as and when i see them but you will get slightly more if you read them in order. Because again, I mean, I've just been introduced to characters who I know are dead and stuff like that. So it's quite strange. But in this one, the guy who's missing is actually buried alive. I can tell you that because it happens right at the start. So it's not a major spoiler or anything like that. And uh, yeah, other than that, though, I can't go too much further into it. Suffice to say, I really like kind of the relationships between the different characters on both on the good sides and the bad sides. It was just a really well written mystery. And there's also this twist about two thirds of the way through that reminds me of Gillian Flynn and stuff, you know, authors like that. Except this was out about 10 years before that kind of kind of thing came pop became popular. And it also has a reference to uh, Misery by Stephen King as well, which I thought was cool. So, yeah, this was another four out of five. And finally we have Strange Weather by Joe Hill, so I'm going to read the blurb of this one. This is a nice short one. 
Four short novels from the Sunday Times best-selling author of The Fireman and Horns, all linked by weather you have never seen before. From splinters of deadly rain to a cloud that is more solid than it should be, these tales demonstrate Joe Hill's remarkable ability to show you what hides beneath our reality. So this has got, again, four short novels. I would actually say they're four novellas. Uh, I'd maybe give the second one maybe as a short novel. So I'll go through each of them. Uh, I should point out as well, they also each have like accompanying artwork and each of it, each of those is done by different uh, different artists. There's also an afterword, which I thought was quite cool, which gave some extra context to it. And yeah, each of these four stories is linked by the theme of weather. So in Snapshot, uh, you have these little icons at the top of the pages to kind of show you which story you're in and in snapshot It is like a rain of dead birds. There's a lot to do with like an old Polaroid uh, Camera as well the Polaroid man in it. Uh, it reminded me a bit of the uh, I think it's called the Sun Dog by Stephen King who's, who's Joe Hill's father, but um, I wasn't particularly interested in it to be honest and I was I don't know, I read that first one and it took me quite a while to get through it And I just I was worried that I wasn't gonna like the rest of the book then we get to loaded which is the longest one in this book. And as you can imagine, with a title like Loaded, it's about guns. Um, it's also the theme in this is fire. There's like a, a natural fire happening and people are being evacuated and stuff like that. And basically, we follow a, th a few different threads to begin with and then they kind of come together. And it kind of centers on this, this mall cop who's kind of come back from Afghanistan. His uh, wife is divorcing him and like limiting, uh, she's sort of restraining order, order and limited the amount of access he has to his kid. And he works as this, you know, more security guard. And then there's a shooting. And then he kind of reacts quite badly to the shooting. And things progress from there. Now, I told uh, my girlfriend that this has one of the bleakest endings I've ever come across. The only thing I can think of bleaker is the ending of The Mist by... Uh, well, it's like the, uh, the movie of The Mist, which is based on a novella by Stephen King, which I haven't got to yet. Um, and I really like that ending, but a lot of people don't. But yeah, it's another really bleak ending. But I think that was probably the best story in the collection, to be honest. Then we have a loft and that's about a guy who basically he was in a band with these two other women and one of them died so he goes skydiving kind of in her memory but really it's to actually impress the other woman that they were in the band with and um but he decided he really doesn't want to do it but eventually he does he has to go out of the plane and then he hits a cloud and sort of lands on this cloud and then he's stuck in the sky uh, all like electromagnetism and stuff uh, an EMP pulse has gone out so anything electric doesn't work doesn't know how to tell people where he is and he kind of has to confront his past and we keep going into these flashbacks into his backstory and that kind of helps him to escape from this cloud and kind of confront his fears as well uh, it was all right uh, I didn't particularly enjoy it to be honest and then we have rain which is the final one and in rain basically we have these like big old spikes coming out of the sky so um yeah like carrot sized rain uh, that's like made out of metal and stuff and we kind of delve into what caused that it's kind of a parody almost of like post-apocalyptic novels um but apparently it said in the appendix um you know hill was actually parodying himself with what he wrote in the fireman which i haven't read yet but i do want to get to um but yeah it was quite a decent story i think he could have done more with it to be honest but maybe that's because he wrote the fireman so so I look forward to reading that. But overall, I gave this a 4 out of 5 as well, and it was a good old pick. It's uh, quite dense, though. Like, I don't know, the print's a lot quite small, and yeah, it took me longer to read than I was expecting. So just be warned. So yeah, there is what I thought of the books that uh, Biggie picked for me. So I guess I will probably do another one of these videos, because why not? I've got a few things lined up first that I definitely do want to read, and then I think I'm going to use him to... Basically, he, he kind of helps me to pick my TBR when, you know... I'm not sure what I want to read next and I've got a few ideas like I want to read Horn soon because I, I uh, you know I've been reading quite a bit of Joe Hill recently with this video and then um, yeah my other half's read it and she enjoyed it and we want to watch the film so I'll probably get to that soon but uh, yeah let me know in the comments if you want me to keep doing this and make this a regular thing because Biggie's pretty good at it so I see no reason why we can't uh, in the meantime hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video hit subscribe for more let me know in the comments what you thought of these books and I'll see you soon for another bookish video thanks a lot bye bye